Hi everyone and welcome back welcome to my another brand new playlist and this playlist will be all about the, the front end full stack webinars here I will be talking about different topics from different tools and different technologies like one topic from webpack one topic from tailwind one topic from Svelte JS, one topic from react angular I mean it's like a mix and match covering everything like the important aspects which I can convert as a webinar okay so the today's topics are mostly related with react like uh, how to do the integrations what all different possible ways what all, how to make a api call in react either it's a graphql either it's a rest what all different popular libraries to do that so first of all the first video we are going to talk about different ways of using axios in react first of all how we will import import axios from axios what is the Axios? Axios is a HTTP client library that helps us to make an API call or integrate it with the REST APIs or GraphQL APIs because GraphQL APIs are also a kind of HTTP post and you can trigger the HTTP post with Axios. So I mean Axios have, provides us all different methods get, put, post, delete and either you can work with the promises, you can work with uh, async await that depends on you how you want to use the axios we can use these uh, placeholder apis json placeholder apis to work on the axios like some mock apis we need right so let's say i i have posts so what i will do is uh, i will just write a simple hook set post and here i can just use use state uh, you can say i'm tearing and here we can import uh, use state and also use effect these are the very basic thing you, which you might have already done now I can also have another state which is like uh, use uh, uh, error like to just store the error here we can just do use effect and inside use effect callback we can easily make an API call dependency array is empty and here what I can do is I can just simply do is axios.cat and uh, the base URL my base URL can be const URL it is json placeholder uh, json placeholder URL so this is our simple URL we are doing json placeholder dot type icode dot com posts and if you wanted to fetch a particular post that's, this will become our URL right Exios.get URL and it is going to return as the promise and how we can get the data is inside the promise callback we can just say is set posts or set post and we can simply call response.data data.data so this is how you will receive a data from Exios call so we already have the api call so this is just like simply doing axios.get okay and then here we can just say is inside this we can have we can just say is if posts is there if we receive the post if we don't have the post that means we can just simply return null but if we have the post what we can do is we can just print the post or title simple right this is how we are doing the simple integration so what we are doing exios.get right it is going to return as the promise and then we are just resolving the promise using dot then and getting the data and sending it back okay so this is just a simple get but there may be another call which is like function create post what if you wanted to make a post api call so we can just call it as a const create post okay create post and we can convert this into arrow function this is how you can define the functions inside this and you can do axios.post instead of get similarly you can do axios.post put delete all these things this is the url the base url and you have to pass uh, base URL is simply like this 
you can hard code this also because this URL is okay let's just keep this URL here and we can just append the the URL for get here which is dollar one that's it or we can just simply pass one url forward slash one and here we are just using a simple url that means we are going to trigger http post here and we wanted to send a body body which contains the title and body so here we can say title is this and body for the log is this test and test so and this is exios.post it will also resolve the data like this using dot then and we will be able to set it so new post will also work like this you can actually make a put call update call delete call all these different calls you will be able to make so let's say update post this is a create post an update post will be uh, let's say here i'm trying to update a post with the id one right so dollar url is dynamic here also we have to do the same thing otherwise it will consider this as a string this url is dynamic one is a we are hard coding one for now this is post instead of this you can send a put right because we are updating a blog post where the id is one and this is the the payload okay similarly you can you can put uh, you can mark a delete request here you need to do is you just need to call this as a delete here i can call it as a delete post and instead of this i can say say delete i don't need to pass the payload because it's http delete it just need what resource we wanted to delete and we don't need to save the data we can just say okay uh, the, uh, the deletion is done set post null this is fine okay how to handle the errors now next thing is what if we are getting errors while making these api calls to the exios okay so this is the promise right promise can also be rejected so we need to handle it in the dot catch and you will be getting the error and this error we can actually use to set in a particular hook like i can create a huge state hook for error error and i can say set error and this is initialized initially with null and then once we get an error so i can call set error and i can just pass error there so this is how we can populate the errors by whenever you are doing the get put post delete how to handle the error these are just a different possible ways okay we can also create a exios instance what i mean for that is we can actually say is const client and then you can define all the methods on top of that exios dot create okay it what what it asks is the base url i think this is a base url and inside the base url we can pass this thing now we can simply do is a client.get instead of exios client.get url1 client.get now you don't need to pass the url at all you can just pass the dynamic argument okay one a client.get client.post and inside the post it will be uh, simply we, we don't need to pass even the url for the post because the url is the same so here we are saying is client.post this body client.put we can simply say is okay base url is there and we are just looking for this particular update and same for the delete okay if we are using the client exios instance then this is how it is going to work we can also use async await i mean that is like uh, this is how we used to do it so use effect use effect hook we are using currently to do all these things use effect hook cannot be async but you can write some async logic inside this so what we can do is we can just create async function 
like get post and we can call this function inside this block only we can just say is get post and now this function can be async so we can just take const response and then we are going to use async await await client dot get and we can just pass forward slash one that's it and we can just say set post equal to response dot data here we don't need to resolve a promise because we are using a sync await so everything will be inside this okay uh, if you want to delete a post you can just create a, a sync so const create post here you can just simply do is const response equal to client dot post and you don't need to wait for the promise and you can just say is set posts equal to response dot data okay simple and now this create post you can call from somewhere so these are just uh, different options like this is how we are going to do with the uh, async await earlier we were doing it with the promises use effect uh, is not async but you can call a method or you can define a method outside like you can call this particular function totally outside what we can do is const get post okay and we can make this function async and you can call this method from this block uh, use effect block this can also be like this client.get and set post this is just another way if you wanted to move this thing outside okay uh, so now we can do the same thing with the use exios hook like this is a custom hook which we can use to do the same thing what we need to do is we don't need to use use effect in this particular case we can just simply say is uh, we can just initialize this like use exios pass the url and we are getting these different properties data error and loading right and we are going to use this to render the data onto the ui so what we can say is if data and error is there we can return these things if the error is coming Right, otherwise we got the data we can just simply say is data dot title okay so we can actually write our own hook like your own pre-made hook or you can use the the existing library use exios client that also provide use exios hook like use effect uh, like there is a huge fetch is also a hook for the fetch library similarly there is a use exios and we can do this okay so this is all about exios you can also use fetch apis fetch apis is also on the same line like uh, fetch uh, apis is mostly dealing with the promises let's say if you want to do it with a fetch like getting all the posts how can we do that so i will simply say is a get post and uh, Await. I can just do a fetch dot get. You don't need to import anything because fetch is a part of window dot fetch. It's a part of the client web API. Fetch dot get, and then we will get the data here. And we can say is const response equal to await data dot JSON. And this is the response we are getting. We can do it in the 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 way of promises also like if you want to do it in the simple promises we can just convert this whole thing so this is a uh, async await okay so we can simply say is fetch dot data fetch dot uh, so this is a fetch api so inside fetch we are passing the url and then we once we pass the url we can actually it is going to return as the promise fetch and uh, let's say http example.com forward slash movies dot json here we want to do a dot uh, get right so we can just say is response 
and it is going to give us the response dot json this is again a promise so we have to resolve it we can do a dot then and we will get the data and here we are getting the actual data now the same thing you can convert it into a sync await right same as the earlier example or you can just call this like uh, let's say i'm just creating we can simply convert this into a sync await const fetch data async and this is a sync wrapper and here we can just do this using a sync await const response equal to await so earlier it was returning a promise you just put await before that now const data equal to we can simply say is response dot json await response dot json right and we got data so we can just do set post and we can pass this data and then we will call this fetch data method from our use effect hook okay so these are the possible ways in which you can get the data using fetch and xeos apis and that's uh, what i planned for this video there may be other uh, different ways to make an api call right uh, even this fetch has a lot of arguments it's not all about passing the url fetch url and the other arguments will be a lot like uh, here you can pass what is the method method is post okay what is mood if you are pa passing a cross origin then cache no cache headers all these things you can i mean these are like libraries fetch is a api browser api but it provides all different possibilities you can actually pass a different content type like you are passing the header content type and it it will be application json and then other argument like if, if you want to pass body and this is a post call so you have to pass some body you can pass the data okay and this is how you can make it using async await okay fetch and xeos are mostly used and we, we are able to do a lot of things with these so we don't need any additional library when you want to do it with the promises this is going to return a promise like if i just remove this using async await then fetch this whole section is going to return us the promise and we can just do simply dot then and here we can just get the response object okay and then we can also again resolve it because it's it's going to serialize it into a json and that is a promise and we can just do a dot then to receive the data finally and here we will get the data whatever we need this is how it is going to work if we are going to do with the promises okay so this is all about uh, fetch and axios and how to make an api call now this api call you can make through some redux action or maybe through some if a use effect hook or component did mount that's on you so this is one last option which i missed and i want to talk about it is react query so recently i started using it and then i'm thinking that why i was not using it earlier so you see this is just a simple api call right uh, where we are using fetch or axios and we might have to maintain a lot of uh, state here uh, because i want to have one another state is a loading let's say loading and set loading right here i will say set loading and that is initially is false i will what is this initially that set loading is false so whenever the data call started i will just mark that as a true and then based on whatever is happening in our calls i have to mark it as a true right so set loading is now false but if what if we are getting error 
then again I have to make set loading equal to false. So if you see this simple example either using Axios or fetch, we have to maintain three different state and write and we have to use use Axios use state hook. Right? So in this example we are using use state and use effect hook and uses three different states to determine whatever the, the data has been fetched or data uh, has encountered any error or data is still loading. Right? So this is like can we get rid of this? This is like too much we are doing it. Then I explode this use query. Use query is actually a library and the use query hook which is like providing a function we will take a look on to this use query and how to use it. So simply is uh, we have to create a query client wrapper and we can simply use use query we can import this from react query okay this is how you will import a react query and then you can start using this in your application so how our application will behave now is we don't need these states and we can simply say is our code will look little smaller and we can have all these states different states of loading the data here we have a use query and we can just provide a key okay fetch data and this is the sync operation and this can be your axios operation for some api call let's say http uh, json placeholder dot open api dot com forward slash posts i'm not sure if this is the correct url okay we are actually trying to get the posts and here we can provide all the different state is loading so we don't need to use use state is loading if there is an error or if there is a data has arrived right so in that case you don't need to do if else or some kind of a condition here you can simply say is if the data is there then do this if this is the loading state you can say is if loading state is there then do this loading otherwise we might have received some data so we can just print the data okay data will be there so this kind of loading state we can have when we are using use query so similarly use query library also provide a use mutation I mean this is looks like inspired from the GraphQL where we are using use query use mutation use subscription all those things and whenever you want to make it a sync you can also make it something like this uh, use query to do this is a key and this can also be a sync block you can use a sync await uh, in this and you can also use use mutation hook and how to do the use mutation is simply is use mutation and here you are doing axios dot post right and this depends on the post and you can call it like this and this is really cool this is how we are making api call and all so you can also use this to invalidate the data once the api call is done mutation to do right so you can do the query invalidation once we receive the successful data from the post and use mutation to do like you you want to do some reset after you are done with the api calls that you can do this and you can also do a query question case uh, invalidate queries you can also invalidate the queries which are there in using react query okay so this is like a lot cleaner way to do the implementation when you are doing a fetching data creating data like http get put post delete patch for all those places you can use this very simple implementation if you wanted to make it a sync await then you can do it like this and if you want to do the mutation a simple mutation you can write like this because post mutation you wanted to do some uh, query case clear or you can just reset the state all these things can happen here okay so this is all, all about react query you can actually go to this library and start using it this is really clean and this helps us to maintain the different state we don't need to use use effect use axios or use state use effect hook 
we can do everything with the help of this and it provides these nice helper use mutations and use query before that your root components needs to be wrapped inside a query client i think it provides a lot of other inputs like uh, we're not able to do it that you have to provide a wrapper okay i will i will add a link of the actual implementation using react query okay that's all about like different ways to make an api call fetch the data using fetch xuse and react query react query is also doing indirectly like this but we don't need to manage the different state using this okay uh, thanks everyone thanks for watching